This is Hamid, and I'm from uh, PyTorch Partner Engineering, uh, and I'm gonna follow Mark's discussion and talk about how to serve LLMs on TorServe with distributed inference and other features. So first of all, why distributed inference? Well, simply most of these models won't fit into one GPU. Typically, GPU has like between 16 to 40 gigabytes of memory, and if you look at like a 30B model, in half precision, you would need like 60 gigabytes of memory, or 70B Llama, it would need minimum of 140 gigabytes of memory in half precision, which translates to seven to eight, at least eight and GPUs. So we need a solution actually to partition these models over multiple devices. Let's take a look at what are the model parallelization solutions and approaches to that in this space today. So there are two major approaches here. One is tensor parallelism, where you basically cut your model uh, vertically or parallelizing the computation within an op, like matrix multiplication. This introduces one communication here, which is like an all reduce, and it can yield into faster computations as well uh, if you have enough workload. And it requires, uh, so it requires actually a higher, higher uh, speed network, and the reason is to keep your GPUs busy because it's a within and up uh, parallelization. So it actually means that it is more suitable for single node uh, inference. Then the other major uh, approach here is pipeline parallelism, where you basically uh, cut your model horizontally into multiple stages, and each stage is holding into a bunch of layers. So you send the output of the first stage as the input to the second stage. So here we need to couple this technique with micro-batching, otherwise you cannot utilize your GPUs smartly. So due to the nature of the communication here, it is more suitable to scaling to multi-nodes with pipeline parallelism. So how we are actually implementing these models today in the OSS space? There are two main approaches here. One is modify your model code. Basically, define your parallel layers and build your models on top of those parallel layers. This is very much of a Megatron style. So we have seen it in different libraries as well, like Ferris Scale, Transformer, Neuronex from AWS. And mostly these, uh, tr these kind of parallelisms are bound to specific trainers. Whereas on the other hand, we have PyTorch APIs, which is taking a different strategy and mostly require no change or very minimal changes uh, to your model, and it's just asking to pass your model as is, and it's gonna automatically partition your model, and it is also trainer agnostic. So here's an example of uh, modifying your model code, and this is an example of Llama 2 model built on top of Ferris Skull, and as you can see on the left-hand side, we are actually defining those parallel layers, and in the attention layer, you can see that we are uh, building the model on top of those parallel layers. As I mentioned, this is Ferris scale, but Megatron, Transformer, Nix, and all of them are the same nature. So on the other hand, here is PyTorch uh, API. This is for pipeline parallelism. We have packages as PP. This is in a beta state. And what it does, it actually uses FX tracing to understand your model and partition it into multiple stages. So it has a very simple API, it's a one-liner that take your model as is and give you a number of stages that has been distributed over different uh, GPUs. It also supports uh, deferred initialization as well that we will talk about it later. And we also have PyTorch tensor parallel APIs which are working with uh, D-tensors and if you can look at these uh, code here, I guess you can see it actually. So uh, you can basically pass your sharding strategy to parallelize module, and it's gonna just simply uh, parallelize your uh, modules onto different devices. So this is again the same strategy. You don't need to change your model code. And uh, these are all trainer agnostics, so you can actually do uh, this, uh, I mean, you can do the inference when you are bringing arbitrary checkpoints from different libraries. So to highlight some of the uh, challenges that we have in, in distributed inference, well, first of all, most of these OSS solutions are bound to specific trainers, or as I mentioned, they need model uh, changes. Like deep speed, hugging face accelerate, parallel former, TGI, VLLM, et cetera. 
So this calls for a kind of a solution that automatically partition your model and an arbitrary checkpoint. So it doesn't matter which trainer you have trained your model with. It can actually, it should be able to partition your model. The other two challenges here are deferred initialization, as Mark talked about it. So it can help you to load your model faster and avoid ohms on CPU and uh, GPU in some cases as well if you have to put your model on device. So, then we have a checkpoint conversion that I'm gonna talk about it a little bit here. So here's the first initialization, how it's working today. So you can actually initialize your model with meta device. Then you ask your model parallel API to parallelize your model. Uh, you have to materialize your parameter today manually somehow. But there is this extra step here, which you have to change your uh, model checkpoints into something that PyTorch distributed understand, which is basically DTensors. So there is this checkpoint conversion in between, then you can use uh, PyTorch distributed checkpoint APIs to load the model. So this way, you can actually use uh, deferred initialization. There is this one step, extra step here that we are working to see how we can actually remove uh, checkpoint conversion here. So, okay, talking about like distributed inference and different model parallelizations, so let's move to Tor Server and see what we are supporting today on Tor Server. Today on Tor Server, we have integration with, for distributed inference solutions, we have integrations with DeepSpeed, Hugging Face Accelerate, Neuron SDK distributed inference for uh, AWS custom silicons. And we have PP and TP from PyTorch native APIs in alpha state. We also have micro batching, continuous batching, and the streaming response uh, APIs that Matthias and uh, Lee from our team and AWS has worked on that. So let's take a look at PP here. So we have pipeline parallelism here. Uh, we have initialized this uh, work and enabled the path. Our main goal here was to, e uh, to focus on the ease of use and enablement. Uh, you can see that we have a one-liner API here that you can pass your model as ease, especially all the hugging face models. And you can actually get the stages uh, and initialize your model super simple. Then we have also enabled uh, tensor parallel uh, with D tensors recently for Llama 2 on TorSurf. Uh, well, this is the initial step. We have enabled the path, but we are working on optimizing the inference path as well. So stay tuned here for uh, upcoming updates very soon. On the micro-batching side, uh, we have actually, so micro-batching would be essential if you want to use pipeline parallelism. We have the micro-batching and a very nice examples over there that, you can, uh, that can help you to get it started easily. It can be helpful both for GPU, better GPU utilizations and parallelizing your pre-processing in some cases, for example, dealing with uh, like some of the uh, vision models that you are dealing with. So it can have a heavy pre-process that we can actually parallelize it here but uh, having multi-threading. We also have continuous batching and other ingredients for LLM serving recipe, which uh, the idea here is to continuously add the request from the queue to uh, the current batch as one request get completed. So you don't have to wait for the whole batch to get completed and send the next request. As Mark talked about, like uh, basically a dynamic batching in um, towards surf, so you don't have to wait for the whole batch to get back to you. So this would help you with uh, higher throughput and better user experience which uh, we go to the next feature, which is a streaming uh, response API. Again, so when you are sending a request to these LLMs, they can take a long time to do the inference and do the token generation, basically. So uh, streaming APIs will help you to uh, get, the, you don't have to wait for the whole sequence to get generated. You get each token as it's generated back to client side. So it has a nice feature to get implemented and integrated into different applications. So here you can see that uh, we define two APIs here. One is sending the intermediate predict response that you can use and we have used the hugging face text uh, iterator for stream batches. So a combination of these two, uh, we have actually example on Llama 2 here for inferential uh, devices that can help you actually to get it started. 
Then again, so as I talked, we have integration with all these features, with all these different libraries, Hugging Face, PP, DeepSpeed, DeepSpeed M2, Inferentia 2, and here uh, actually we published, uh, we added actually Inferentia 2 example very recently, and we published a uh, use case on that. Uh, that you can see here, we have used tensor parallel and parallel prefilling here. It helped actually to speed up the inference a lot, and it made it a lot cheaper on Inferentia 2 compared to equivalent GPUs. We got 3x cheaper uh, cost performance points. So I highly recommend to take a look at this example as well. And Mark talked a lot about like different optimizations, complementary optimizations to make the model faster. He talked about memory bound, CPU bound, and I think the other two things that are important here uh, for LLMs in particular, they are KB cache. It matters a lot. It can be extremely memory intensive and memory bound issue. So ideas similar to page attention can be helpful here. The other thing to consider is quantization, where we have two schemes. You have quantization of the weight only, or which can help with memory saving, but it doesn't speed up your model. And you have quantization schemes with weight and activations which can actually speed up your model. So uh, we have this great blog post from Horace that I highly recommend you guys to take a look. So based on all of these uh, for TorServe LLM roadmap, we are looking into deeper integration with PyTorch uh, Tensor Parallel and optimizing the inference path. We are looking into 2D inference adding Tensor Parallel to pipeline parallelism for multi-node inference if you are dealing with uh, lower end GPUs. Uh, adding page attention support and adding support for complementary optimizations that I just talked about it. So at the end, I just wanted to thank the PyTorch team and specific Rohan, Junjie, Iris, and from our TorchSurf team, Matthias, Lee, Ankit, Mark, and Gita. So thanks everyone for listening. Any questions? I couldn't believe I can do it in 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> Great. No questions means everything looks fine. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>